so uh, good day to all and uh, uh, Jamia Millia Islamia is uh, organizing this uh, architecture for masses and the theme is architecture and planning for villages my research topic is disaster resilient amphibious community houses so the authors are uh, Shujah Rahman, me, myself, uh, and uh, Aftab Alam. And uh, we have uh, affiliations from Jamia Millia Islamia and Al-Fala University. The keywords to the paper are amphibious houses, floating architecture, disaster resilient communities, self-sustainable floating houses, and the flood mitigation. Uh, so the question is why floating architecture? So uh, the cost of reclamation of land if we talk about that why we are going floating in terms of that uh, then we compare it with the land that the reclamation of land requires time as well as the expenditure floating structures are flexible and can be easily carried away in uh, the distances right the floating uh, Structures are suitable for the deep sea. Structures are adjustable as per the water uh, levels and they are resistor pro when disaster prone and can be modular and be implemented on the larger scale. Floating structures uh, experiences basically six uh, kind of forces. Uh, there are translation motions as well as the rotational. Three of them are translation motion and the three of them are rotational. The surge sway he are the translation motions and the whole pitch here are the rotational motions. Uh, the mooring is very important for any floating structure to tie to the strata of the sea or the water body, uh, which eventually uh, balances these forces uh, through the buoyant force and not to make it a centric uh, condition. Uh, when we talk about the mega float, this this uh, Japan uh, airport uh, which is being considered as a mega float so there they uh, use breakwater to have uh, to lessen the water wave uh, directly coming to the structure they moved the structure and they gave the assets from the flooring structure to the land structure so there are some of the literature review that we did over the floating communities <clears throat> One of them is uh, this uh, aquatic architecture research article that has been done of, by Ada Musa. And uh, this particular case is of Maldives. Uh, in the Maldives, there is uh, increasingly high uh, sea level rise. And eventually, she tried to get into uh, food, energy, water, education, and the housing for a particular case in Maldives. Food, she proposed as of for uh, having uh, seaweed, algae, lettuce, these type of food which could be uh, floating in nature, sustainable uh, energy generation, which could be floating, that is the wave energy, the solar energy, and even the algae biomass, uh, the rainwater and desalinization. And further, she categorized the whole process into the phases. And she thinks that this is the phase two to adapt, uh, that we need to develop uh, adaptive module, utilizing the existing city infrastructure. And also we need to see what else uh, can be done. The next uh, <clears throat> research I was able to understand, we were able to understand that the floating city, how floating city could move up. Like in the middle image, blue one, uh, you could see that a particular prototype can be moved from one place to another in case of disasters. If there's a cyclone in the city, uh, ocean, then eventually uh, the whole block can be moved to uh, one particular area. And for uh, categorizing into the modular thing, we need to see if that particular block or particular uh, prototype, prototype is structurally stable, comfortable as per the wave characteristics of a sea or a river or a water body. And uh, uh, if th that is movable and things like that. So this is a particular case study, which uh, added, we did for the Dhaka city. Uh, they, but they particularly, this is kind of a very good example of a South Asian country with the local vernacular materials done. And uh, they have this spine in the central uh, image, uh, which shows that there is this, uh, this uh, uh, stable spines. And then eventually the only the houses moves up and down, which we could see. This is comparatively a plan of that particular house community. Only two units were built there. This is the 
build plans and elevation uh, of uh, two units only. So uh, the spine, which you could say from dark gray color is fixed and the rest, light gray color moves up and down as per the water levels. On the left, you can see the visuals of uh, the floods and without the floods. And uh, the, this is completely made up of the local materials that is uh, bamboo, uh, the floating structure. Uh, only the foundation is of uh, ferrocement concrete. Uh, there are three types of uh, species that are used for the bamboo. One is Baroque, Java, and Mulli. Uh, Baroque is basically used for the structural part. Java is used for um, exterior wall finishes and things like that. And Mulli is used for mats for, you know, completely giving a very good look. And things. this is the um, view of uh, the par particular uh, building and they have used they have tested two types of uh, foundations one is for the ferro cement and the other is of water body and uh, they come up that the ferro cement foundation is more good as compared to water body as there were some uh, fluctuations in the density of it what more important is that they how they made this particular house or cell sustainable uh, for the water, they uh, collected the water, rainwater, and then eventually through a very uh, natural process of uh, filtering, they did a rain, they gave a rainwater filter, and then eventually water is collected in a tank uh, in the service line, which is fixed, and then this water is pumped up uh, on the first floor by the people, and eventually uh, people collect the water for drinking purposes. This only water is used by boiling it. And uh, if you could see this diagram of rainwater harvesting storage systems, and on the left, this there is written biosense bio filter. This particularly used for uh, reutilizing the gray water. The gray water comes into this biosand uh, filter. Biosand filters have basically three layers: one of sand and gray, one of fine sand on top, and coarse in the middle, and the gray will in the uh, top bottom of bottom part of the layer and um, water enters into the system from tops and passes through diffuser plate <clears throat> and uh, there are composite toilets uh, where the units are diverted directly into the gardens so that are selected for the biomass they've used two solar panels uh, one, each one of 60 uh, watt and uh, that particularly one uh, solar panel is used for one household and uh, yeah so this is another example of uh, uh, Netherlands and uh, for this particularly eco uh, village they have tried to use 30 water there are almost 30 water plots uh, each are being categorized as a, a group of six six uh, houses so they try to give these 10 parameters which include that that should be collected to the urban area that should be productive and thriving that should be circular and sustainable no wasted resources produce more than it consumes and that should be adaptable in uh, architecture point of view and it should be uh, symbiotic with the nature it should be inclusive of community compact and connected and should use nature based technologies so eventually they were tried they uh, were able to create this uh, 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 and this was a very good example. Uh, these are the uh, particular kinds of uh, uh, prototype housing that they made. So each house ha has been placed as a sustainable, uh, self-reliant houses. And the more uh, the energy that particular produces, if they, that energy is surplus, then eventually it is circulated to the uh, neighbor houses. And the jetty, which you could see, uh, which connects all the houses are a major service uh, thing and this is the plan of the particular housing and the different types of uh, variability in the area this is a complete uh, scheme of a, a single house which has a sun boiler the green roofs uh, uh, to cut down the solar heat gain there's this uh, heat energy recovery system uh, and uh, there is this uh, wastewater system that is different and so everything is connected into a particular house and the jetty is being used as uh, the carrier of uh, gray and water black water and it uh, these are separated and the biorefinery ferments the formation into energy that how that's how it goes on. so for the implementation part uh, of design, it is uh, it's a research which is oriented as a design based. So, 
the location of that particular implementation is of Tezpur, the rural area of Tezpur. From Putra River is there and it swells every uh, season. You can see the visuals of the uh, flood and it eventually goes up to uh, almost uh, 2 meters, 2.2 meters to be uh, precise. And uh, this is the parameters which uh, uh, we have studied to uh, make it on a point like for the energy production, we are using piezoelectric. Solar, uh, solar panels, wind funnels, and also the bio uh, mass, bio mass, and yeah, for water management, we are utilizing rainwater and wastewater. For uh, there's a food production area also. Uh, the structure is uh, ferro cement and the local material, which is bamboo, and uh, the local materials is there, which is derived from the stability and love with the materials. So this is the visual of a house which have a white portion, which is a floating uh, uh, foundation. Uh, there is this entry and uh, there's a small garden or uh, agriculture area with, where they could increase it. And then eventually uh, has to be tested for the structures. And uh, the central spine, which you could see the, the huge bamboo structure, it's a central spine, which is fixed to the ground and the whole other houses moves up and down. So there's a cluster of uh, eight units, each uh, have uh, five members. So uh, it uh, cumulatively makes 40 people and it has uh, piezoelectric panels on uh, the top of the spine along with the solar panels. Uh, that is actually solar panels with the piezoelectric material so that uh, if a raindrop falls, then eventually uh, it uh, gen uh, it converts the mechanical energy of uh, raindrop into electrical energy. It has a wind funnel in between, which carries, which sucks the air and passes to mm, a small uh, area, it sucks the wind from the more area, and it goes to the smaller area, which is eventually effect, or even V1 is equal to A2, A2. And then eventually more energy can be uh, harnessed from that particular thing. They have sh these have shared areas of uh, water, of sanitation, and uh, also for the agriculture. So this is a schematic section of uh, this particular house, which have in uh, downward they have this uh, living area. And uh, on the above they have kitchen and washrooms. Uh, and from the washrooms, the urine is particularly directed to the gardens and the stool is collected below uh, in the foundation and uh, also uh, the gray water is collected in within the foundation uh, project um, sorry tank uh, rainwater catchment area is above uh, the spine only the above surface is collect the water and makes makes it down and stored in the particular two tanks of uh, the, either side and then Eventually, these uh, tanks uh, from these tanks, the water is pumped out. And uh, yeah, so, so during the flood, it it's like this: the whole uh, houses goes up, and it comes down during the normal days or as the water recedes. So these are some visuals of uh, the house, which uh, shows the materials that are used bamboo and uh, these are some calculations of water like for rural area water requirements is 55 uh, liters per day and uh, with a 40 population we get 2200 as uh, the total cumulative water requirement these uh, this uh, the below table shows that there is a breakage of uh, uh, water that for drinking we use for uh, lpd per person for cooking 11 bathing 15 uh, washing utensils it's almost 10 and ablution is 15 so it, the water breakage is almost 55 for if, uh, so how about the renewable resources that we are able to gain the water first is the rainwater harvesting which eventually per day with the coefficient and the area catchment area and annual rainfall we almost get 1479 per day and gray water we get from the laundry almost about 1600. So the urine from the toilet is uh, directly used in the gardens. So we are not get, uh, taking that into account. So total renewable water is around 3160 uh, liters per day. And uh, 
for that particular day, if we uh, cancel out the 2200 of the water requirements and eventually we get 960 uh, liters per day, that could be able to grow almost 160 uh, kilo rice. Yeah. Uh, energy requirements uh, for a particular house, we have calculated uh, a cumulative energy. We would be having a fan, uh, a, a table fan, a two tube lights, two bulbs, and our TV, a mobile charger. So it comes out to be 2.08 uh, kilowatt per day. For eight units, we need 16.64. Uh, so this is the total energy requirement of a house of sorry building with eight units that comes out to be 16.64 so how will harness how will make it net zero we are taking the solar panels which is of 325 watt and we will will be able to get 60 uh, solar panels as per the size uh, over the top of the spine and uh, it will eventually be generating 19.5 kilowatt hour and yeah, we, we, we will also be using some uh, piezoelectric and internal energies. These are some radi uh, radiation map analysis for a particular, uh, this particular house. And also on the right top, you could see there's some uh, analysis for uh, top of this uh, spine, which says that uh, uh, on a mean radiation, there is 14, uh, 36 kilowatt hour kilowatt per square meters energy is there. So it uh, it uh, supports that the sun energy can be used. The storage of batteries and everything will be in the central spine uh, with the uh, waterproof uh, drums. This is a waste generation that a human excreta can be used, uh, which is almost about 11.68 cubic meters per year. These are some options of the farm uh, farming. For the structures, if we take uh, say that how the bamboo should be treated, the, bam the bamboo treatment is very necessary to make the life of the building more uh, and also make this building feasible. So the, with the treatment of boron, it almost internal uh, bamboos can go more than 30 years and treatment with the fixed per, uh, preservatives and that can also be used, which eventually increases the uh, life of external bamboos, which are in the ground or above the ground. So these are the references, uh, which, uh, which are already in the literature reviews and everything. Thank you.